Okay, I'm sorry if the lighting is a bit off, but I um, haven't got my studio lights on. Just because I can't be bothered to go and get them sorted out. So we're going to start by pouring our lye into our oils, as usual. So I've been really getting into this program on YouTube called Hot Ones. And it's just a guy who interviews people while they eat hot wings. So if you've been watching it, thumbs up. <laughs> it's really good. And I've just been watching the Thundercat one. There's Shia LaBeouf's one. His is my favourite so far. He's had me in pieces. That's really good. I was in hysteric watching him. Okay, let me just stick blend this. Just to a emulsification stage. So I don't know how this design is going to turn out because I need to make sure that each layer doesn't set up too quick. So I'm going to have to do it layer by layer and sort of put the fragrance into each layer rather than in the whole pot. Just so that we can stay on the safe side and not let it run away with us. I'm just going to come in to show you my new goggles. I just bought them for 69 pence from one of our local cheap stores and I thought I'll go back and get some. And I've just put them on for the first time. They're a bit loose so I've just got to adjust the sides but 69 pence. It's a shop, shop called Home Bargains here in the UK. It's a really funny shop. It's probably like a Dollar Tree or something like that in the States. We can just get so much junk and things for cheap so <laughs> I needed to get some padded envelopes and things like that and I thought let's just spend an hour I didn't actually spend an hour I spent about half an hour looking around the store just buying some uh, junk <laughs> I thought oh I love those and I can actually see through these my old my other ones were getting a bit old so yeah okay so yeah, I've been watching hot ones and that's because I was watching my program um, Virgin River, but I got to the end of series one and thought it would just carry on and I didn't realise that it didn't. So I was like, no, what am I going to do now? It just stopped. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to do that. I thought there might be at least two seasons on Netflix, but the second season is coming at the end of this month. So all is not lost, but I didn't know what to do myself for a second. I was like, okay, um, okay, what am I going to watch? So I put Hot Ones on again. It's a very funny programme. Okay, so... I'm going to be doing like red and white, um, maybe crooked layers because it's always tricky to get straight layers unless you can leave enough time between each one. Um, you know what I mean. So yeah, I might do them crooked and just sort of squish a spoon into each layer as it hardens up. So I'm going to need to get myself another jug, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna start off red. First layer is gonna be red, so I'm gonna use some red oxide, and I'm gonna mix it with a bit of this mica from Mica Mama, which is called terracotta. It's a really strong red, but it's a pinky red, so if I mix it with a darker red, it should come out like a deep, vibrant red. Just do little by little. To start with, Let's see what it does. Looks pretty decent. It does actually look like a candy apple red, so that's good. Okay. Side a second and grab a little bit of fragrance. So, where are we? I'm going to smidge a little bit for each layer. So this is a straight apple strudel scent. really is one of my favorites i love this it's such a it's a very tart apple fragrance oil but with that really good cinnamon scent in it as well it's really good 
just like an apple pie, really, or just like an apple strudel, I guess. Okay, I'm going to pour this and leave it to set as much as we can anyway. I'm thinking I might get four layers, maybe. That's what I'm going for anyway. I want four layers and then the top, I've got my apples to go on the top. I've got some green apples. I should have actually done red apples for Christmas. That's why I'm doing the red and white layers so that we've got those Christmassy colours going on with this soap. So I've just been avoiding the news like the plague this week. Just making sure that it doesn't uh, infiltrate my brain like it did the other day. I was like getting really into listening to it all and I thought, no, nope, you know what, you're not doing me any favours. This is not making me feel good. So I turned it all off again and started to listen to some of the stuff. And now I feel much better. Okay, I'm going to move that to the side. Actually, we might be able to get some layers out of this. I'll just show you my little apples that I've made. They're just on a lid here. So it's just there, just green apples. Okay, so next layer I'm going to do white. So let's use this jug. And I've got some titanium dioxide here. I want to mix with a little water. Pop that in there, and we'll use that again in a second. And stick blend is going to have some red on it, but it'll be okay. We're making today back in my other spot, my old spot in front of the window. There's nobody around at the moment, so that's why I'm here, because I'm on my new stainless steel table that I told you I was buying. So it came and I assembled it the other day, and I'm very happy with it. It's got storage underneath as well, so I've got my uh, soap and oils underneath here. So everything's to hand when I'm ready to make soap in the afternoons. It's getting on, it's like 25 to 5 now. And I normally leave work about this time, but I just wanted to get a batch of soap made because all day I've been doing hair conditioner and whip soap base. And it takes all day to sort those things out, really. It's like you have these ideas that you're going to be able to um, get so much done in a day, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> okay, that has sort of set, I think, enough for me to do the layers I wanted to do. So let's see. Try not to go too fast. ways of doing this I'm just lazy as you know okay red that's better the white's obviously always going to thicken up quicker than the red is little bit of red towards the end. Back over there again. And some white. Okay, 
Why did I wear a long sleeve white top today? Tell me that, eh? I, how am I so stupid? When, well, I didn't even know I was making soap today, but making anything and wearing white here is a really stupid thing to do. Never mind. Okay, white again. Quick with that one because it wants to thicken up on me rather quickly. Okay, that's the layers done. So now these top bits don't really matter if they're a little bit wonky. Okay. So the last couple of days, or last few days, I've been thinking about getting another dock and I've been in two minds because another dog as everybody will know is a hassle but Bridie is six years old now and I've always wanted to get another one but I think we might have left it a little bit too late because she's so sort of set in her little ways now and our routine is what it is and we have a nice life so I'm <laughs> sort of um yeah a little bit in two minds about what to do because it's a lot of hassle for me because it'll be me that has to look after a dog and it means really I would be really having to juggle my time around to deal with it you know so I'm actually leaning towards not doing it now I, I was tempted because the dog that's had the puppies is Bridie's sister and I was just sort of so overcome the other day that I was like oh god I'd love one you know and I just started tapping on the keyboard and not really thinking about what I was doing but um I mean I would have I would have the dog I really really would have another dog but I just don't know I don't know what to do I mean really in two minds about it so if you're in two minds my grandpa always said, if in doubt, leave it out, <laughs> which is a really good way of looking at things because you don't want to make a big mistake, especially when things are sort of lovely as they are, you know. It's a tricky old one to think about and there'll be loads of people that are for it and loads of people that are against it, but I've just got to be really sensible because of the way that business is and, you know. We're doing all right and it's busy and how I juggle my life now is Bridie comes to work with me in the morning and then she goes home at lunchtime which is why I always make in the afternoon so she's not in the workshop with me. If I had a puppy it would mean I'd have to have it with me all day. So it's really not going to work is it? So I think I might have to give it a miss to be honest. It's a shame because I would have really liked to have Bridie's sister's puppies because Bridie got spayed so we were never going to breed from Bridie it's never been in you know something we wanted to do so it's always tricky isn't it knowing what to do but I think I've made my mind up and the answer is probably going to be a no so I'm just going to now I'm going to start putting blobs on where my apples are going to go to make sure that's marked out properly. Just get my marker pen. Make sure my apples go in the right place. I was just going to leave it blobbed, but then I realised what I probably should have done was how I've done it now. 
just in case I'm off somewhere. Okay, so I'm now going to push my little apples into the tops so that each soap will have a little green apple on the top of each chunk. So these are going to be cut into chunks again, like the there'll be 25 bars or 25 like rectangle chunks. And there's still five ounces. Just bring you in a bit closer for this. There you go, so you can see a bit closer. And any leftover, ooh, 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 didn't want to do that. Any leftover batter, I can just make some new little red apples for samples, for soap samples to go in orders and things like that. So I've got a bit left. They look really pretty like this. I use, um, to get like colour ideas, I always use, um, I used to use colour lovers, which I've actually used today, and I also use design seeds for colour palettes, but today I tapped in apple pie into the colour lovers website, and it came up, the first one was this colour scheme and in stripes, so I thought, ah, that's a good idea, that would look quite nice for Christmas. It's very home alone, isn't it? Those colours, that house, oh. The home alone house. Who doesn't want the home alone house? And the home alone bedroom. <laughs> okay. There we go. So that is... I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. We shall see. I'm not sure, but it's uh, an apple strudel or apple pie scent. So I'll make my mind up. Make sure they're all in there and they're not going to come off. They won't come off. Okay, so I'll be back to cut this tomorrow. See you later. Okay, I am back to cut this. So. Have a look and see what we got and hope those layers have come out nice. Mm. Let's see. Let us pray. Okay, so it looks a bit wonky on that side, but it looks okay on that side. I think it might just be some dribbling, that's all. Okay, so I've got to cut that way around. So I've got my edge piece for samples. Cut it into soap logs first. I love the smell of this. I used a little bit more water yesterday, so there is a slight Titanium dioxide crackle in there. But not too bad. You will get that if you up your water or you stick to the regular amount of water needed for the recipe and you use titanium dioxide, chances are you're going to get glycerin rivers, so they're called. So all along there you'll see there's that happening. I don't like it, I'd much rather not have any crackling at all, it really is not a pretty look to me, I don't like it. Some people don't mind it, but I do. <laughs> I'm not happy when it happens, but you just have to learn to live with it. As long as it's not too bad and it's not gone through the whole batch, then I'm not too bothered, but yeah, that top bit is a little bit happening there. And my apples are a little bit off centre. I'm going to have to remark my mould. So that's that cut. Just get my trimmer. Just going to trim the edges off. 
so we've got nice neat sides when we cut into chunks. Okay, so I'm having a bit of a struggle this morning because yesterday I think I kind of made up my mind that I wasn't going to get another dog. <laughs> but as life has it, sometimes puts things in your path to make you rethink yet again. So this morning I've met another little puppy whippet and I'll see if I can insert the picture if I can remember. So I took some pictures of the dog to show Matt. So I knew this one dog called Stanley, he's a whippet. So there's not that many in this town, but the ones that are here, we all sort of know each other. We know who's got whippets. But um, I knew they'd got a new puppy. So they got Stanley, who's a boy whippet, and then they've just taken on another whippet called Jess. And we just met her for the first time. Hang on, let me get my, let me get my phone. I might be able to... Okay, so, yeah, you might be able to see this on my phone. Maybe. <laughs> I'm zooming in on her. But yeah, very, very, very cute. So she has just maybe changed my mind again. <laughs> So it's a difficult choice because you know that your life's going to be disrupted from, you know, <laughs> how it is already. And we're so used to our lives as they are. And Bridie is such a good dog. And we have a very nice life at the moment. And I just, um, hmm, it's very tricky. But she does like the company of other dogs, of course, because the dogs just do. Some don't. Some don't at all. But... Bridie really does enjoy other dogs and she likes to play and she likes to run and chase. She's more of a, as long as she can be out in front and have a dog chasing her, then she's very, very happy with that. So anyway, she took to this dog straight away, which was funny to see because I thought oh this is kind of um you know making me think again now <laughs> about the decision I'd already made and now what do I do so I've come away shown Matt the pictures and then Matt's like I want one <laughs> so we're gonna have to see we just have to wait to see what the um the lady says who we got Bridie from in the first place she might not want us to have another one <laughs> I don't know no reason why, but um, yeah, it's a, it's tricky. But anyway, there's this uh, lovely looking soap. I really like this. So my lines are a little bit wonky on some of these, and some of them aren't too bad. But I do love how the apple looks on the top. It looks really cute. Cute is not a word that I use very often, unless it's to do with dogs. <laughs> but these... They really are cute. I love how that blob looks on the top, that red blob with the green apple on the top. It's really good. So I'm happy with this. Now these ones I do trim with my planer. I plane off the sides and the edges normally, just to tidy them up a bit, because it makes for a very nice, smooth soap use a planer. I don't use them on all of my soap bars anymore. I used to but since I changed and went back to my one inch um, cutter I decided to not plane every single bar because you know I make hundreds and hundreds but sometimes if it's just these little chunks and there's only 25 it's not too much bother but if you've got batches of 100 and things like that, it can be very time consuming. So I'd kind of put a day aside to actually trim up batch loads of soap because that's how long it takes to mess with them. If I'm going to plane them all up, it takes ages, which can be a bit ridiculous, really. Because you don't want to be spending too much time on each batch of soap messing with it you know it sort of um really eats into the time that you're spending at work when you could be being more productive and making more things so it's nice to have them looking good but there's only certain bars of mine that i bother to um plain and these are some of them but yeah my regular bars i don't i just trim off 
the corners. I did actually open a bar of soap the other day by another soap maker and I've got to say, if you don't trim like the, the corners off like this, then it really actually hurts when you start to use the soap. It's not very nice. So I would always recommend trimming the edges so that they're rounded slightly so that when the end user gets the bar, they're not really, really, really hard. I've had um, people say before, God, the corners on handmade soap, it hurts when you first start to use it. And I was only washing my hands with one the other day and I thought, but my neck, that needs some sorting out. <laughs> you know, it's okay after a few uses, but um, right off the bat, when you first use a bar of soap, it's very, very nice to have those corners trimmed. These are like little Christmas tree decorations. <laughs> like something out of, what's that blooming film? Oh no, I really can't think. I really can't think. Yeah, let's leave that there because I really can't remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so let me know what you think I should do about getting another dog. And like, have you got two dogs? How did you find having two dogs? What's it like getting a puppy when you've already got a grown-up dog? And oh, I'm opening myself up for a whole mess of trouble, I know I am. But it's very hard to resist when they look as cute as they do. And there ain't nothing like a Whippet puppy, it's just so beautiful. And the Italian Greyhounds, the one that like, Jedda Marbles has got, those are Italian Greyhounds. They're very similar, but they're a slightly smaller breed than a Whippet, although you can get very small Whippets, but the Italian Greyhound head is slightly different. They don't have such elongated snouts. Um, so yeah, there are some major differences between those two, but they look very, very similar. Anywho, I'm gonna leave it there. I will leave some pictures at the end for you, and I will see you very soon. Ta-ta!